program today, we have uh, Lee Welter, who is a uh, physician here in Sacramento and also adjunct faculty in emergency medical services. That's at the uh, American River. Right? American River College. Okay, and Jason McPhee, a mechanical engineer for the state of California. Welcome to the show. Uh, we're on the air uh, in Sacramento at uh, Channel 17 on the web at www.accesssacramento.org. Uh, and the uh, air times are uh, 8 p.m. Thursday, if you miss it then, noon on Friday or 4 a.m. on Saturday, all Pacific time. We're also on YouTube and uh, on cable channels uh, elsewhere around the country. Uh, welcome to the show. Uh, there's a, a case going on with the California Coastal Commission. It's Lee, I'm sorry, Lynch versus California Coastal Commission. It's on the uh, issue of seawalls, now, or seawall permits, I should say. If you live on a bluff or even uh, a, a, any, any kind of beach that's subject to erosion and you yes. have a, a home relatively close to the beach, uh, it behooves you to have some riprap or some other uh, erosion prevention measures to prevent your uh, home from being uh, washed into the uh, ocean in uh, a, uh, a high storm. In order to get uh, the uh, seawall or the riprap or the permit to do so, you have to get a, per a permit from, from the California Coastal Commission. And uh, the commission was founded or was started back in, uh, in the early uh, uh, 1970s. And uh, the uh, problem with the Lynch case is that the, the Lynches had their seawall destroyed, had their seawall and a stairway to their uh, beach uh, destroyed by, by a storm. Now they're having trouble getting, uh, getting, their, getting it replaced. Um, why would you think the Coastal Commission would be uh, being stubborn about something that seems as, as, as fundamental as replacing a seawall? Well, I could be a smart aleck, and you've heard me do this before, but does, Lee, this, you a smart aleck? No. does, this, mean, does this mean that the California government wishes to erode our private property rights? Uh, and, and clearly, if they, without the seawall, there will be damage to the, uh, the Lynch family's private property. And who's accountable for that? Don't they have a right to protect their private property? Well, of course, the, the commission argument is that the, uh, the, the, the beaches, the beaches per se, yes. are public property. And up until up, up to the high water line, they, they in fact are. And that the course of nature is for uh, beaches to uh, ebb and flow, to erode and to fill and to back and fill and so forth. And if you put up a seawall, you're getting in the way of Mother Nature and the natural uh, contours of the beach over over uh, over decades. Well, I, I can, so, it's, I, so it's Mother I, Nature versus private property. Yeah, I can I sense that, but uh, if you look from that perspective, isn't it true that the the native state, our natural condition of humanity, is dire poverty? Anything beyond that is due to our productivity and our, our means of restructuring our environment and our ability to deal with the uh, vicissitudes of nature, shelter, clothing, food, and the like. Uh, you take away, which of those are you going to take away? The right to private property and the right to protect our private property? So you kind of nailed the, 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 the underlying fundamental issue, which is that we thrive as a human species by improving the uh, the environment by I improving agree. where we where we live in making making the, the you know the Rousseau's uh, wild nature a little bit more tamed a little bit more amenable to living by building houses by erecting shelter by uh, transporting ourselves well, in automobiles rather another than another example after the, the lack of rain in recent years and then a surplus of rain recently and all the rapid runoff from the rivers. I think what we should do with those rivers is dam them. Uh, water reservoirs, different example, I'm getting a little off track here, but I think it's a real important issue. The advantage of putting reservoirs in gives us very clean, affordable hydroelectric power. It mitigates fl flood risk. Pro provides a recreational uh, waterway or pond or lake, and it lets us have water when we most need it. Which we, it's pretty hard to claim it from the salty uh, brine uh, downstream yeah. afterwards. Well, it's interesting because uh, up in up in Klamath, uh, Klamath Lake, uh, up in the northwestern or northeastern corner of California, 
there is a, 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 a movement underway uh, that's been going on for a, a number of years now to tear down the dams that, that, produce, or that, uh, that form the lakes, Klamath Lake and, and a couple of other lakes up in the area. Uh, the idea being that nature needs to be allowed to run its course, that these need to be turned back into productive salmon streams, even though there's some question as to whether they were ever salmon streams in the first place. The idea being that let the streams run free. Uh, seasonal flows dry some of the year, uh, flood some of the year. That's the way nature intended. And if you are a farmer who relies on irrigation water from those lakes, or if you are uh, in danger, have, have, have property that could be uh, inundated by a flood uh, with undammed rivers, well, that's your problem. Back to nature, huh? Back yeah. to our primitive uh, state of poverty. But no, it's, it's, it's a real philosophy and a real well, well, thing is. that's going on and uh, something people that the people who own land up in northeastern California, Siskiyou County and so forth, they're having a hard time uh, trying to figure out how to deal with that. So I've, I, I suppose the proponents of this uh, Back to nature movement is probably sleep under the stars. Do they use tents? No, they sleep in San Francisco or Sacramento, I think. Oh, I see. So they're, it's, it's a fantasy that they're dealing with. That they're, they're not the reality that it's, it's, other people yeah, have to live it's, with. It's, yeah, it's creating a, uh, a a wild land that they can come visit when they you know during the summer months and, and uh, retreat to their urban enclaves during the during the uh, the dry season or the wet oh, season. Oh, that's probably one of the reasons that we had a uh, a rally at the Capitol. Uh, couple days ago, no, actually it was yesterday, uh, for the 51st state. Do you know about the 51st state? I've heard uh, of the state of Jefferson. I, w I, think it's, I think it's a fine idea, but I don't believe there's a, a snowball's chance in hell that the Senate will vote to admit a second California into the Union, which is what would be required for a 51st state. Uh, you may well be right, and, and undoubtedly that's because the people that have the control, at least currently, get more benefit from the subservience or the lack of representation of the people in the, the North State. I was told, I think it's one state senator uh, in the North State has six counties uh, of constituency, whereas uh, L.A. County has something like 16 senators because of the dense population. Sure. Yeah. It's yeah. interesting too on the state of Jefferson issue is it w if you notice uh, recently after the election with Trump there was a big movement for Cal exit and if you look at the the people who are most likely supporting that are most likely against having a state of Jefferson which is a little bit odd. <laughs> it's ironic. We can cut a deal. You can have your own, uh, your own nation if you Turn us loose, and well, it's just that the principle appears to be the same, you know. If, if, I agree. So. A lot of irony to be had in California. AB 1129 is a bill on the California State Assembly that would prevent. We we're talking about seawalls before. It would prevent seawall construction to protect any structure built after 1977. 1977 being the year the Coastal Commission uh, came into being, January 1st, 1977. So, if you had a, a home on the uh, coast uh, in 1976 effectively, uh, you can build a seawall. But if you, anything built after that, uh, you will not be able to build a, a seawall for any new construction or replace a deteriorating seawall for anything that was built from 1977 uh, until uh, this year for the last uh, what, 40 years. So an extension of the back to nature movement. Well, yes. It would seem, yes. Yes. Um, let's see, what else are we? Agriculture not very natural, is it? <laughs> well, uh, yeah, we, I mean, we're going uh, to have adversely affect that, and uh, well, in, in fact, you mentioned agriculture. There's also a case up in, uh, uh, in the northern Central Valley where a farmer, John Duarte, decided to plow his field, oh, uh, yes. a wheat field, and because the uh, field had been pasture for a number of years, uh, it had been a wheat field, you know, several years prior, but it had been pasture for a number of years. Uh, a uh, Army Corps of Engineer person happened to be uh, driving by and noticed that the, wheat or the, the field was being plowed and cited him for uh, plowing, uh, uh, what the heck was it? Uh, uh, wetlands. Messing, yeah, uh, interfering with, with uh, wetlands, uh, vernal pools or whatever. Now the farmer in fact had uh, made sure that he was not uh, plowing, he was plowing around any possible vernal pools. So he left the mud puddles. He was leaving the mud puddles, the vernal pools, yes. And, and he was, uh, but he was plowing. 
the Army Corps of Engineers said, well, you're not plowing, you're deep ripping. Well, five <laughs> inches is not exactly deep ripping. And that's what he was plowing, uh, you know, five inches, five inches, five, six inch furrows. And uh, the, uh, the expert report that the uh, Army Corps came up with in prosecuting the case was uh, a report that said, by plowing a wheat field, he was creating many mountain ranges. The, oh, you mean those little things between the furrows, yeah, huh? Yeah. The, uh, the, the problem that would be caused by that would be, uh, obviously, uh, uh, more erosion uh, into uh, well, a tributary. When the rain hits the peak and it runs down into the trough, it's yeah, going to yeah. wipe well, away the so. dirt that lies in between. Yeah. So you, you mentioned farming. There's another situation where a very fundamental uh, practice is being essentially outlawed, in this case by the, by the, uh, the federal government, the Army Corps of Engineers. Now, if George Washington. Now, this guy is now facing fines in the, uh, I don't know, I forget, in, in six, seven figure fines. Well, if George Washington or Thomas Jefferson were aware of this sort of thing, they'd probably say it's some weird kind of satire going on, right? It would be <laughs> hard to believe that government has come to this state. Yeah, yeah. But we have it. Well, and part of it is, you know, we get the government that we ask for. Somebody must like it. We, no, we, seriously, we get, we get the government that we ask for, either by indifference or by decision. Now, here's a case where this is a, a Banning Ranch versus Newport Beach. It's a California Coastal Commission issue again. Uh, Banning Ranch is a, uh, a, a development or a, a proposed development uh, in Newport Beach, relatively but close. But this is in a state that claims that we don't have enough housing. Yes, this is building new housing in a state where, obviously, because of the price of housing, we need new housing. It's, it's pretty obvious that uh, there's a, a, a dearth of new housing being built. Uh, and one of the reasons is because of all of the, of the red tape involved in putting in a new development. In this particular case, it took eight years for Banning Ranch to get uh, the uh, uh, permits to build from the city of Newport Beach. And if that's not bad enough, now they've got to get permits from, uh, from the Coastal Commission and the uh, uh, Coastal Commission is kind of dragging its heels, uh, extending the uh, period of time necessary in order to, to get the permits to build some houses and some uh, shopping areas and you know, leaving some open space, but you know, building some houses in, a, in an area that is in a dire need of housing uh, based on the, on the prices of houses in that area. Another sad story. In fact, that brings to mind some hearsay that uh, came from a uh, locker room talk a decade or so back. Uh, these friends had a buddy who owned a bicycle accessory business with a warehouse located in the vicinity of San Luis Obispo. The man's business was growing, so he wanted to expand his warehouse facility. He learned that in order to go through all the permitting process and impact studies and the like would cost him $1.4 million. Without build, even to, turning to, a spade of dirt to build to build to get permits to build a to add to his warehouse to add to his warehouse, thus he started scouting around for other options, and finally decided that Colorado would not charge him anything for the permitting process, but they would donate the land for his warehouse. So he's he's gone, like such as many other businesses. Worry about keeping jobs in California? Well, you have got to be friendly to the employers in the businesses on the uh, yeah on the on the international front we have a situation in Venezuela now Bernie Sanders and a number of movie stars were all very very uh, uh, appreciative of the uh, uh, efforts that uh, the uh, uh, government of Venezuela uh, Hugo Chavez they were very much admirers of Hugo Chavez as he brought socialism and brought uh, succor oh, to yes. the needy in the country of Venezuela uh, back, oh, maybe 20, 30 years ago, or maybe 10, 20 years ago, something like that. Uh, socialism, of course, has run its course, uh, uh, and uh, now the guy that's in charge uh, is uh, kind of uh, in, in, in a pickle. He's uh, running out of options. People, you know, the grocery store shelves are bare. He's sitting on, literally, the world's largest reserves of oil. Venezuela has more oil in the ground than any other country in the world, even Saudi Arabia or the United States or, or, or Russia. More oil in the ground than any other country in the world. And because they've essentially run off the uh, multinational oil companies by nationalizing their property and then not knowing how to 
run an oil field. Uh, which is Zimbabwe exactly, all over again, isn't it? Well, even worse, Zimbabwe didn't have oil. They had agriculture, which got destroyed by yeah, right. kleptocratic government. This is uh, the oil industry, uh, you know, the, the, the drilling for and the harvest of oil, mining of oil, uh, has been essentially brought to nearly a standstill in Venezuela. And as a result, you know, nationalized, as a result, the, uh, what used to be one of the richest countries in South America is now one of the poorest countries in South America. And as a result of that, their government bonds, bonds issued by the government of Venezuela, are selling for pennies on the dollar. A real bargain. Stepping in is Maybe. Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs has actually gone in and bought a large position in, Venezuel in Venezuelan uh, government bonds. Is there an issue there with, uh, uh, with, with that happening? What do you think, uh, uh, Jason? Well, I, to, to me, if somebody wants to make an investment, I, I don't see any reason to stop them. I mean, uh, uh, it seems to me that if somebody thinks it's a, a good bet to, to loan somebody some money, which is, in a sense, what they're doing, then I, you know, more power to them uh, as long as it's a voluntary exchange. Uh -huh. Well, there are two considerations. One is, is this a solid deal where there's likely a legitimate payback or uh, compensation? Or is this going to result in insolvency where some, in a civilized country, where a judicial process would, would right the wrongs or where sometimes there's an extrajudicial process? Are we going to send CIA observers in there to, <laughs> to fix the government in favor of Goldman Sachs? Well, yeah, that's a good question, I guess, in, in today's real politic. But uh, normally when a government bond uh, defaults, the investor in the bond just loses, loses his investment. That's normally what Doesn't happens. even get a share of that oil? Not, I, Not I, doubt very much, I doubt very much <laughs> that those bonds are backed by oil revenues. Uh, and, of course, the oil revenues have have dwindled uh, substantially over the last uh, couple of, uh, of decades. So, but the question I have is, Goldman Sachs is, in essence, propping up the government of, the socialist government of, of uh, Venezuela. Is that something that we should be concerned with or something that, well, you know, if they want to invest in, 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 in the, the bright future of socialism, they should have that opportunity? Well, I stunned one of my children once when I said, contrary to some beliefs, socialism works very well for the ruling class and their minions, but not for anybody else. Well, it works well for... So there are people yeah. at the top of the heap, maybe they're getting boosted up and there's maybe a kickback of some sort. Yeah, maybe. Uh, and of course it works very well in a small society. I mean, socialism works very well at the family level. When if, you know, it's from each according to their ability, to each according to their mean, uh, from each according to their ability, to each according to their need. Well, that that's exactly what happens in a nuclear family. Yes, but an infant hope, has all need and no ability. Yes, but the hope in a in, in a uh, mature family or a uh, competent family is that children will reach maturity and become self-sufficient. And personal gain ability and at that and point personal gain responsibility, responsibility yeah. that goes along with the, the liberty that we all deserve. Right. And people are, you know, kids are trained to become responsible citizens in a, in a, in a functioning family. That doesn't always happen though, does it? No, but, but generally <laughs> speaking it happens more, more in a family situation than it does in say, a, a, a national situation where if you uh, give uh, a, yeah, a crony capitalist or crony socialist or uh, a, a needy person uh, soccer without demanding responsibility, then that giving will probably go on for quite some time if there's no accountability. And it's, it's even worse than that. Uh, there's a psychiatrist with the uh, pen name of uh, Theodore Dalrymple who wrote a book about his experiences working as a psychiatrist in the worst section of London, in the hospital and in the prison. So it's usually it's or often it's the same people or out of prison and in the hospital or vice versa. The title of the book is Life at the Bottom. He talks about how these supposedly underprivileged people are told that they are victims of society. Well, if I were a victim of society, you couldn't blame me for anything I did because it's somebody else's fault, right? 
and they do the most bizarre and uh, uh, disgusting things. I mean, that's one of the reasons they're back in prison. Uh, in fact, uh, Dalrymple asked one of these uh, culprits, well, how is it that you happen to stab this guy to death? Well, the, the knife just went in. The knife just went in. That's, that's what happened. <laughs> I just had a, an extra thought, though, on the Venezuela situation. With it, it seems to me that uh, Goldman Sachs is is also a, a check, in a way, on on what's happening there by by taking a risk. They have to be looking at the situation too, and maybe evaluating it themselves whether or not it's worth taking that risk. I guess so. Potentially, there's being signals sent to them that you know, hey, we've got reforms, or you know, and. And in a way to get that money, I mean, you have to be able to show somebody that, that you're willing That's to do something. That's a good point. Maybe there is so, an upside. So, yeah, so potentially there's a market, you know, Well, uh, the Vampire there. Squid didn't get to be a, 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 a very successful firm by being uh, stupid about making investments. <laughs> sure. Well, and maybe they know something about the uh, future of Nicolas Maduro that we don't. <laughs> sure. But then, and then there's also the upside, too, of the story. If, if it does happen that uh, the country somehow reforms and gets rescued, then it's uh, free markets save Venezuela from socialist experiments. <laughs> there you go. There you go. It's been known to happen. Uh, my understanding, well, I, I don't have great depth of knowledge, is that uh, Portugal was ruled by a dictator who was overthrown and uh, uh, the government was liberalized in the true sense of the word. Uh, oh. And uh, people are freer now. There's less crime. Oh, one thing they did was abolish their drug laws, something the United States ought to do sometime soon. Uh, the drug laws are very destructive. The beneficiaries of our drug laws are the criminal drug gangs, price support for them, and the, uh, the prison industry. And, nobody and law, else. law enforcement. Well, yeah, but they're, they're not all nasty. Well, you know, no, law enforcement. But they have an gets, obligation gets, uh, to enforce you know, the law. Well, no, they, they have. They, you know, it's, a, it's an, a reason to hire more to to increase the uh, the fiefdom, okay. uh, increase the uh, the size of the department and so forth, uh, because it takes a lot of a lot of time and and effort Fair and uh, money and so forth in order to enforce drug laws. It's not. Uh, it's kind of hard to find victimless uh, criminals uh, because nobody's complaining. Uh. <laughs> Like there would be, you know, like there are, there are complaints when somebody gets uh, shot or when somebody has their property stolen. There, there's a complaint. Well, yes. In a victimless crime, nobody is complaining, so that you know you have to use entrapment. You have to use uh, 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 basically uh, espionage methods in order to uh, find the, uh, the the so-called culprits in order to uh, uh, make yes. an arrest. Yes. That used to be one of the greatest contradictions with most people who don't consider themselves to be libertarian, but. I think they, they view their own bodies as something that they should have sovereignty over, but when it comes to, you know, other people, they, they seem to think that they, they shouldn't have that freedom, and that, and to me it seems like that's something that we could really, you know, maybe make some headway with as libertarians. <laughs> Destroy the old double, double standard. Yes. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Uh, SB 1263 is a bill in the California Senate that would ban developments that rely on hauled water. In other words, you can't build a community where, uh, in order to uh, uh, provide water for you know, domestic use, it would have to be uh, trucked in. Why, why does the state care how a community gets its water, assuming that the community itself is willing to pay for the, the trucking costs and so forth? Well, this brings to mind the uh, controversy about um, oil pipelines, where it's very clear that a pipeline is much safer and secure than using rail transport or trucking, but I don't see any hazard in trucking water. It's a puzzle. Uh, people would be maybe more independent of their local government or water agency. Yeah, I know you'd only have to suppose there's some environmental reason behind it, but. To me, it seems like as long as, from an economics perspective, if you get rid of, if you're sure that all the externalities are priced in, then where should it matter where they get their water from? So if they're, if they're paying the freight, and as long as there's no externalities going on, then what should it matter? Yeah, but we're trying to be rational as libertarians. Sure. There, must be, there must be another Well, point. I think probably what you're really looking at as, is, is a Trojan horse. The real issue is whether or not 
communities get developed, uh, and it's a NIMBY issue. Uh, you know, if people say, we don't want uh, our backyard uh, development to go in and into our, you know, into what is now wilderness behind our house, we'll try to stop it by any hook, crook method we can, and saying that, hey, they don't have water, and so, you know, they can't build if, uh, if they can't get water, and if the only way they can get water is by hauling it in, hey, we'll just make it against a lot of haul water. And uh, presto, Zippo, we've uh, prevented that development from going in, which is our real uh, objective. Oh, let's see, and this is in a state that has a shortage of housing. Again. Again. Yes. Again. No wonder we have shortage a shortage of, of housing. Shortage of housing and what housing we do have goes for uh, astronomical prices uh, and rents. Well, any time you restrict the quantity of a product, the price has to go up, doesn't it? And then it? we kind of wonder why, if you walk around downtown, you notice an awful lot of people sleeping on the streets. Not only that, but um, my wife and I toured uh, several months ago a new uh, either condos or apartment development not too far from downtown, and we noticed how cramped it seemed. In fact, my wife had noticed the steps to the second level were so steep because they want to compress everything, fit lots of apartments into a small footprint. One more topic before we wrap the, thing, wrap the show. Christopher Wheeler of Florida was recently given 180, 180 days in jail for not giving his correct iPhone passcode. Uh, it's in the case where he was accused of uh, domestic abuse, hitting his daughter. But he thought he had given them the, the correct passcode. It didn't work, so maybe he forgot it. Who knows? Maybe he was lying. Who knows? But the the the, the, under, the, the underlying Fourth Amendment issue is: Should uh, police have the ability to search your uh, your smartphone without your permission, and without without probable cause, without a warrant? Well, it seems to me if you're high up in the IRS, you can claim that you, you, you might incriminate yourself and refuse to provide any information whatsoever. I suppose that includes what's on the, the cell phone or Mrs. Clinton's private server, right? To, to take the hammer to it and solve that problem. No, you wipe it. Oh, you wipe it with a rag. That's yeah. right. I forgot about that part. You know, it seems to me these uh, cell phones and other things are becoming so ubiquitous. It's it's becoming more and more a part of who we are every day. And I mean, I, it's hard to imagine yourself without this technology. So it, would, it, it almost starts to get to the point, like, should the, should the government have the ability to sort of drill inside your head and, and pull that information out without, you know, a, a warrant, I guess. And, so. and that's, you know, that's the next step. Yeah. <laughs> we'll talk about it another time on the Libertarian Counterpoint. Thank you very much for being part of the show. We'll see you again next week uh, on uh, www.accesssacramento.org, Channel 17, or YouTube. Thank you very much. We'll see you next week.